Hey there, amplifiers. You know, one of the coolest things that I get to see is just how many awesome people there are in the world that are making a difference. And some people, when it comes to marketing sales, they have it wrong. They're focused on pushing their agenda on other people and it pushes people away. It gives people that uh, taste of uh, sales or over pushed marketing message. And it's just not the way to do it. Our guest today, what I really appreciate about uh, our guest is the fact that she has the authentic way of building relationships to build business. And that's what we're talking about today. And without further ado, let's let's do an introduction to Miss Patty Farmer. All right, so Patty is the president and CEO of Patty Farmer International. She's a marketing, media, and money expert, which is really cool, business growth strategist and coach, Forbes Coaching Council member and contributor, and really helps with communication and sales as well. So she's definitely a growth amplifier when it comes to making things happen. So welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Miss Patty Farmer. Patty, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I love this whole concept of what you're doing and how you're serving. I, I really appreciate how you show up and how you align with the, the philosophy that we're promoting. Um, business is about relationships. And far too often, and I know I've, I've been guilty of it on my journey to, to where I'm at today, we learn and see other people promoting things and other people sell things. And we think that is the way to do it. And then we start trying to emulate what we're seeing, but then we're not necessarily following the right path. Um, so before we get into the, the core topic, if you could take just a brief moment to, to kind of share with our audience, tell us a little bit about what led you to be who you are today. Um, what is your story to becoming the expert that you've become? Oh, thank you so much. So I think really I have been in business for over 23 years, but the pivotal thing that changed the trajectory of my business really was in 2008 when my husband and I moved from Las Vegas to Dallas, you know, huge Metroplex here. And I didn't know anyone, not even one person. And the moment that I got into the house, my husband was gone. I'm waiting for the furniture. I was having this like brief, like, pity party moment where I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I'd had this successful business and here I was, and I didn't know one person. And I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And then I thought to myself, Patty, like put your big girl panties on because you now live in a metroplex of millions of people and you're not in the B2B business or the B2C business, you're in the people business. So this is really an opportunity. So I stood up, I walked over to my refrigerator, didn't have any furniture in the moment. And I took this sticky and I wrote 100,000 on it. And when my husband came home, he said, what is this? And I said, I made a goal today that I don't know one person here, but in one year I'm going to be connected to 100,000 people and I'm gonna make $100,000 building relationships. I did it in nine months and it was pretty much the thing that changed everything in my business and my life really. Wow. So 100,000, that is, that is an interesting goal and number, probably daunting to a lot of people that are, that are maybe listening in and saying, hmm, how would you go about doing such number one, what inspired you to pick that number? And then number two, how did, how did you go about uh, moving that goal into existence in reality? Well, the first thing I did was when I looked back on what I had done in Las Vegas, like, what could I repeat? Like, what had I already done that I didn't have to start over from scratch? And I realized that what I could do is I could create a networking experience here in Dallas, and then I could tap them into and do introductions to the people that I was already connected to that were at the level where I was and where I felt that they wanted to be, which was multi six figures. So when I did that, I thought, oh, well, I don't have to recreate the wheel. I can just do it in person and do it virtual as well. Now, remember, this was in 2008. 
So that's what I did. And I literally in Dallas, I would tell them that I was going to open up 25 chapters across all of Dallas. And literally some of them people told me, Patty, we never thought you could do it, but we were like, Hey, she thinks she can do it. We're just along for the ride. And we actually really only made it to 20, but it was enough. And then literally that's when I realized that you could do in person if you were intentional and you could do it globally. And the real thing was to connect those people and be intentional and that it was more than just trying to refer business because an introduction is like the gift that keeps on giving. So it's really about how to make a powerful introduction and be that connector. So you, you mentioned something in that, that I think is really important <clears throat> because I know some people that are um, involved with networking groups mm -hmm. uh, and they may have a big contact sphere, but sometimes the challenge that they run into it that I've seen is, is they're, they're connecting with a lot of people, but maybe they're not connecting with the right people and they're spending a lot of time, but not quite getting the results that they're looking for. For some people that are like, man, I'm, I'm networking a lot, but I'm just not, being able to get where I want to go, what advice would you have for those people? So sometimes I think it's important to know what not to do as well as it is to know what to do, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to say that the first thing I would say is to stop asking people what they do. Because literally that is the wrong question, right? You ask better questions, you get better answers. And that is not the question. I would say they should replace that question with who do you serve? Now that is such a more dynamic conversation. If you ask somebody who they serve, now they're telling you something that's not even about them, right? Now it's about who they serve. And you could really be thinking and listening for when they tell you, do you serve them too in some way? If not, is there somebody you already have in your network that you can do an introduction for that maybe they do, right? So that question is like so important going around all the time. I think everybody hates the question, what do you do, right? And so I just feel like just switching it around and really thinking about coming from a service model rather than a sell model. Um, I have built my business on the motto of lead with contribution and compensation mm -hmm. will follow and it has served me well. I, I quote Zig Ziglar a lot. Uh, you can have anything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. And I follow that same principle. And it's, it's such a smart thing. Hey, rather than just focusing on, hey, I need something. I need something. I want, I want, I want. Let me, let me help you out. Let me help you out. And eventually it'll come back full circle. So the way I like to, um, to give a visual, I think this is a mm -hmm. great visual. So I always like to think about an ATM machine. And I always like to say, um, so think of your business like an ATM machine because it kind of is, right? But think of it from a relationship point of view. So if you do, are you making more deposits or are you making more withdrawals? Because that's the name of the game, right? All those buttons that are numbers are try putting somebody's face on those buttons and think to yourself, am I making more deposits or am I making more withdrawals? So the other way to ask that is if relationships are the currency in today's business environment, and they are, how fat is your wallet? Is it nice and fat or kind of pretty thin because you're out there just trying to hand out your business card and thinking that's the way you're going to make money and that's not it. Ooh, yeah, I can't tell you how many people I've seen um, be the business card bandit. <laughs> Here's the business card. We went to a conference, me and my business partner, we went to a conference, it was, it was PodFest uh, down in Orlando last year. And I kid you not, someone flung their business cards on the table and walked away. And I was like, that is perhaps the worst business card bandit king. What are you doing? That's, that's the complete opposite of what that's supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, you gave me a good idea. So who do you serve, Patty Farmer? I serve business entrepreneurs who are 40 plus who are looking to attract and convert their ideal clients, and I help them to make their marketing profitable, not painful. So when it comes to these entrepreneurs, um, <clears throat> and they're, they're out there, they've been doing something, mm -hmm. and some of it's worked, I'm sure, and some of it has, they're having a challenge. 
they're they're not quite getting the result. So let's untap that. What is the biggest challenge when it comes to um, the people that you're connecting with that you see that's kind of commonly resurfacing, commonly commonly coming into play that is costing them time or money or preventing them from getting to where they want to go? I would say the number one thing is that they focus too much on their target market. I know everybody likes to talk about target market, right? Knowing who your target market is. But the thing that stops them from actually taking that from attraction to conversion is they really should be focusing on who their target buyers are. They're not the same. Your target market is just somebody who has a problem or a challenge and you have the solution. But your target buyer is somebody who has that challenge and you have the solution, but they're actively looking for the solution. So target market step one, it's really getting in front of your target buyers is where really it matters. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the start here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the start here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. So, all right, so I get the idea. Our target market um, has a lot of people who are maybe fitting the profile, but they may not be the buyers. Um, so the target buyers really getting focused on, all right, well, out of this market, who are the buyers? Um, when you're, when we're talking about that solution um, and, and really getting focused there, because a lot of marketing is really saying getting focused, getting laser focused so that you're speaking right to those people. What are some of the, the actionable things that someone could do to, to look at how they're communicating now and see, am I speaking to the market in general or am I really, am I really starting to communicate to the buyers? What is that? How can people assess how they're doing that now and, and would get a gauge on what they're doing and what they could be doing? Well, conversation really helps, right? <laughs> conversation really helps in, get, in getting in front of the, your target buyers, right? So, one of the things I want to say is that a lot of times we know what our strengths are, right? We know what our strengths are. And some people like to say, oh, but you need to know what your weaknesses are. Well, I don't really think about weaknesses. I think of that as opportunity. The things that are not your strengths are really where opportunity lies, because this gives you the opportunity to reach out to somebody who has that strength and that together you can collaborate and you can get to the marketplace faster, which of course is going to help you financially, right? So for example, I'm in the marketing space. I don't really like writing copy. It's, I can do it. It's not the thing I love to do. So of course it's never high on my list. Whenever I'm going to do something, the very first person I want to collaborate with is a copywriter because a lot of times they don't really want to market. They like to write copy, right? So look at who your market is and look at who you want to be in front of. And that is really where the opportunities are. I think thinking about it in everything. And I'll give you an example. Like, so you're in a Facebook group or LinkedIn group, whatever the case may be. So you're part of a group and here's what we'll all see. And I know you're all going to be shaking your head going, oh yeah, I see it all the time. So what will happen is somebody will post a, problem or challenge they're having in the group. And then like 50 people will jump on there in the comments. Oh, I can fix it. I'm your person. I get, I call that trolling. Um, and that's because a lot of times people tend to do fear marketing. I actually like to do possibility marketing rather than fear marketing. So then all these people will jump on that. Now, is there a better way than that? So of course there is. So what if when you were thinking about target market versus target buyers, you actually became a part of groups where you know your target buyers are there and people that serve them in a different way, right? And that rather than just joining, you were more active. But most importantly, what if you reached out to the person who was the organizer of that group 
and said, you know what, I would really love to serve and support you in this group. Like, what could I do that would literally help your group? Is it giving them a free training, whatever it is, and asking them how you can serve them? Because here's what's going to happen. That person is going to say, oh, my gosh, that's like amazing. Thank you so much for that. You know, and then when you ask them, what could I do to serve you? They're going to reciprocity being what it is. They're going to ask you, well, what can I do to serve you? And does the organizer know who is in her group? All of a sudden, she's going to introduce you to all the people that she thinks you need to know. And now you didn't have to do all that trolling on all those comments and hope that you're the one out of 50 that they pick. In this case, she's going to do the introductions for you in front of the right people. So the the moral of that story here is to know who the organizers are, to know who are the people that have already put together the people. The best way to get new business is to build relationships with people who are already catering to those people. So getting in, in front of the influencers, uh, the shepherds, shall shall you say, um, that already ha have a flock of people that are engaging with them, that have built social rapport, that have a connection and saying, how can I be of value to you? Uh, how can I help amplify what you've got going on here? How can I serve your community? Creating a win-win-win, which is really the best way to, to build business is, you know, we all play different instruments in finding people that you can build harmony with and and then building that harmony and i like what you you're saying there because a lot of the time those opportunities are there but if, if you're, we're not being proactive to to share that vision with someone else and then enroll them into how it would help them how it would help those they serve then it's not going to necessarily just happen on its own <laughs> see they're chasing around the the op little opportunity that everyone's crowding for or thinking above, thinking different, and taking different actions to get different results. So I really appreciate I agree with you. I agree with you. Even if you go back to that networking example that we mm -hmm. went to earlier, I think when people will say, I don't like to be sold to, who does, right? <laughs> but yet while they're getting ready for that networking event that they're going to, they're all thinking in their mind, oh, what am I going to say? And they're all looking for clients, right? But what if you could switch that around and you showed up at things and before while you were prepping, instead you were thinking, um, what could I do to serve them? Like I walk into every networking thing thinking about, oh, I'm looking for people to be on my podcast. I'm looking for someone to write for my magazine. I'm looking for speakers to speak at my event. And even if you don't do those things, like maybe you don't do events or have a magazine or a podcast, but you do know other people. You know, if you walk in and somebody says, oh, why are you here? Or you ask them that first, like, oh, why are you here? Like, and they start telling, oh, I'm looking for clients or I'm looking for this. What about you? Even if you didn't have any of those things, if you said, well, actually, what I'm looking for is to meet people that I can introduce to the other people in my network. Man, mm -hmm. would that make you stand apart from everybody else? And now you're not talking about the weather and your dog and how many kids you have. Now, all of a sudden, they want to share with you the value they bring to the marketplace because they want you to do those introductions. So think about what are you going to give so that when they walk out of there, you're one of those people that are like, if you do exchange business cards, they're not throwing away your business card for sure. It, it makes a complete different feeling. Are you the person who's giving out free samples? Are you the person that's kind of giving value? People want to come to you then versus are you pushing something on them? Are you the in insurance guy that's like, hey, do you got insurance? <laughs> oh, look at the time. I've had people, insurance professionals, offer me free lunches and I'll, and I'll turn them down just because it's like uh, they're – you can just sense of where where they're taking that relationship and how they're approaching it. But when you're being genuine and authentic and you're providing value, aiming to serve, love that philosophy, it, it's a game changer. You don't have you don't have to do the traditional sales. You just need to connect with people and share the value that you provide and and that's, that guides them to where they can go. Um, so we're switching our focus real quick. Patty, um, this is our advisor's pick s section, and we've got a couple things you could pick out to share. Um, if you have a book that you think would be great to read and that you recommend, um, ideally, if it's 
one that's maybe a little bit not super, super known, but if you, if you want to share something and advocate for it, share what you'd like. Um, but which, what's a book you'd like to highlight? I would say that there's two of them. One somebody may recognize called The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma. Uh, literally changed my life. The other one is a little bit lesser known, and it's a real thin book, too. It's called The Greatest Miracle by Og Mandino. And you could probably get through it in one day. It's a game changer as well. So I would say those are the two books that changed my life and my business. Awesome. Um, so then is there an event whether it's in person, like a conference, or a virtual event that you can give a recommendation, a shout out to, to check out. You know, it's about connecting with people, building relationships. Well, I know so many of them, I don't even know where I would start, but oh, I would say that um, there, I'm getting ready to the first week in May, I will be speaking on a sales summit. It is going to be phenomenal, virtual, and um, I'll be posting that out today. But that's going to be really great, this sales summit. I would say that's really a great one. But I would say that that's something that I post all the time. So if somebody mm -hmm. was just connected to me, they would be seeing it all the time because I really value being able to share those with everybody, whether I'm speaking at them or not. Um, and then last but not least, is there a thought leader that you've seen do some pretty cool things recently, inspiring their an amplifier in the world, maybe a potential good guest for this podcast that you'd like to give a shout out to? And I know there's a lot, but if just one comes to mind, you say, hmm, I'm going to give a shout out to this thought leader. I would say the person that I would want to give a shout out to, her name is Teresa Reem, R-E-A-M. And she's literally been in business for 40 years, has been the face of a multi-generational three companies. And now because she does that, she has been also a, a business mentor for women. She's a thought leader. And I love how she's showing up in the world. So she's phenomenal. Awesome. Patty, I appreciate your spirit, your energy, and what you're bringing into the world it's making a difference and the ripple effect goes on very far thank you um as a way traditional way we in these podcasts if you wouldn't mind sharing something that you've learned on your journey that might be helpful for others on theirs it could be related to what you do or it could just be something about life in general just uh, a nice closing thought to end this out well, kind of to go in line with what we're talking about already, I would say that if you choose to strive to be a people connector instead of a business card collector. I love it. Take that to heart. If you're listening in, think of what's one thing that you could do today that would help move a conversation, um, contact a little bit further. Think about, hmm. Who's someone important that you'd like to further your relationship with? And what's an action that you can take that might provide a little bit of value to them? Even just reaching out and asking that question could be one first step. But it's not about ideas. It's about action. So put those ideas in action and keep on amplifying your business. Um, Patty, thank you again for showing up and appreciate you for being the amplifier you are. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.